Hello again. There were a number of interesting responses to the video which I uploaded here yesterday, in which I bemoaned the fact that anti-racists are not as a rule capable of rational debate. Some of those commenting did attempt to disprove this hypothesis, although the arguments which they advanced were a little threadbare. I thought that it might be worth devoting a few videos to explore these points of view over the next few days, because they are ones which viewers might have seen before and found to be superficially convincing. The first of these is that intelligence and IQ are more strongly related to social class and income than they are ethnicity. Those who adhere to this theory point out, quite correctly of course, that there is a wide variation in academic achievement within groups as well as between them. In other words, looking at white people in Britain, we find that some 18-year-olds get three A-levels at grade A, but that others fail miserably at school. There is, of course, a strong correlation between those who succeed academically and the income, social class and professional background of the families from which they come. In other words, the children of doctors and barristers are more likely on the whole to gain three A-levels at grade A than the children of dustmen. Surely, it is argued, this suggests that intelligence and academic achievement has more to do with environment than it does heredity. If so, then we might abandon the idea that the gap in achievement between those of Chinese heritage, white people and those whose families have their origins in Africa has anything to do with genetics. On the face of it, this is a plausible idea although it falls to pieces once we examine it closely. The problem is that those who hold this position do not seem to realise that any debate about IQ and possible variations between ethnic groups always relates to an average within that group. That is to say, there are very intelligent Chinese people and also some pretty stupid ones. The same applies to white people and those of African ancestry, of course. And in all three groups, the same process will be at work, sifting intelligence and creating subgroups within the ethnicity which tend to be higher achieving than some other groups. Looking at white English people shows us how this process works. The reason that intelligence is not distributed evenly and randomly is of course because people with high IQs tend to choose as partners those who are similarly highly endowed. Because a large part of intelligence is inherited, this means that their children tend to be more intellectually able as well. Doctors and lawyers seldom marry stupid people. They prefer to marry other highly paid professionals. This means that the children of such families are more likely to become highly paid professionals in their turn. The same thing happens at the other end of the scale. That is to say that people with lower IQs tend also to marry each other and their children are less likely to be intellectually gifted or to shine academically before becoming architects, engineers or cabinet ministers. This is why the white children who get three A-levels at grade A tend to come from well-to-do middle-class families with people in highly paid professions. Here is the crux of the matter though. Despite these wide variations in IQ within this ethnic group, it is possible to work out the average IQ for the group as a whole. Precisely the same thing happens also with those of Chinese ancestry in Britain. That is to say that sharp-witted professionals tend to marry each other and have sharp-witted children, while those of duller intellect usually marry others who are also not so well gifted in that direction. Despite this, it is still possible to work out the average IQ of this ethnicity. And of course, you can do the same thing with people whose ancestors are from sub-Saharan Africa. So we see that the wide variation within these groups, and the fact that the children of doctors, dentists and university professors are more likely to get three A-levels at grade A than those of people digging ditches or sweeping floors, say, is a natural process 
which tells us absolutely nothing at all about any possible differences between the average IQ of the groups as a whole when compared to a different ethnic group. It is a red herring. I might mention that this particular argument has its roots in political ideology rather than psychology or genetics. It was devised by left-wing academics who wished to prove that class rather than race is the important factor in intelligence. Ultimately, this idea comes from Marxist theory, of course, which doesn't mean that it is automatically wrong, but does indicate that it is not based on empirical data. Indeed, to bolster this notion, founded on the idea of the class war, the data themselves must be mangled and stretched and chopped and taken to a philosophical bed of procrustes, as it were, in order to be made to fit the theory. Good scientific theories are, of course, constructed in quite a different way, by first taking the data and evidence and then forming a theory based upon them, rather than beginning with the theory and then picking the data and trying to get it to shore up your theory, which is what happens when people try to prove that class and not race is the uh, most important factor when it comes to intelligence.